This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. Hello and welcome to Pensacola State Today. I'm your host, Drexel Gilbert. On today's program, something really big and really good is cooking in one of the most popular areas of study at Pensacola State, the Culinary Arts Program. It may be summer, but Pensacola State is buzzing with kids. We'll find out why grade school students are opting to spend their summer days on our college campus. And we'll show you one of the college's instructors who's been tapped for excellence in the classroom. One of the most popular programs of study at Pensacola State College is culinary arts. Something really big is cooking in culinary arts, and it's not all happening in the kitchen. Here to talk with us about that and more are Aaron West, Executive Director of the Pensacola State College Foundation, and Dan Bussey, Dean of Workforce Education. Welcome, gentlemen, to talk about this excitement. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Aaron, we're going to start with you. Tell us about this newest development in culinary arts at Pensacola State College. Well, it, it is an exciting time, and uh, we, are, we are in the process, or we have created the Molly McGuire Culinary Arts Endowed Scholarship uh, for the Culinary Arts Program. Uh, it was after Ms. McGuire's um, passing, some of her friends came forward, and Jim Reeves and several other leaders from the community came forward and wanted to do something in her memory, and they knew of our program here at Pensacola State College. Mm -hmm. Um, and it really matched her dedication to the culinary arts and her dedication to the restaurant industry. And uh, so here we are with, uh, with a new endowment for scholarship support for culinary arts students. And also Molly's uh, dedication to this community too. So many of us knew her and loved her and um, this Absolutely. is a wonderful legacy. It is, and we had, uh, we had over 200 people come together to create this endowment. So that really shows the, the impact that she had on our community and on the industry as well. Okay, I wanna talk to you in a few moments about um, the endowments and how they come to be. Sure. But first let's talk about what is an endowment and why is it important? Well, an, an endowment is a gift that someone leaves where we never use that corpus. We never use that, that portion of the gift. So what we do is we every single year, it lasts forever. That's the upside of an endowment. It lasts forever, and we every single year get the interest off of it. And that interest provides support for a program that somebody loved or provides support for a student that's in that program. So uh, they're everlasting, uh, you know, forever will provide support for a program or for a student, and they can be created by anyone. They can be created by everyone. We do have a minimum level at the college, but the foundation then works with that individual to, uh, to create the criteria and to create the program that they like to see um, supported by their money. And again, it lasts forever, so it's wonderful. And go back to when you said it can be created by anyone. Can we be a little specific about that? I know you have a couple of examples. Sure. We actually have, a, um, we have very large endowments that are created by groups of people like this one that we're talking about now, Molly McGuire Group. Mm -hmm. um, but our most recent one is by a, by a former retired faculty member who was here for years and years and years and, uh, and had an impact on thousands of students as he came through. And he decided to come through uh, after his retirement and set up a $10,000 endowment with the, with the foundation that supports students in physical sciences, which was where he taught. And so, uh, you know, what a great way to leave a legacy for those that you've, that you've already taught and those that come behind you. Okay, great. All right, well, let's move over to you, Dan, and let's talk about the culinary arts program. I know that it is such a popular program. It's a great program already, isn't it? It very much is. Um, one of the things that our, our makes our program great is our faculty. We have a couple faculty members, when you combine their experience, they have more than 55 years of industry experience. They're experts in the field. And not only are they experts in the field, but the local restaurateurs and, and business owners recognize that. Um, and so the, the placement of our students is very, very easy because they're, they come out of the program, whether it's our AS degree in culinary management or it's our college credit certificate program. The skill set that they learn makes them very, very employable. Well, let's talk about that. We, we put them to work. Can we be a little specific about where they might find employment in and out of this area? Locally, we're putting them in restaurants, uh, hotels on the beach, of course. Um, out of the area, we're uh, sending a number of them over to New Orleans, believe it or not. Uh, a number of the casinos up and down the Gulf Coast uh, are actively recruiting our uh, graduates. Um, they are well respected all along the Gulf Coast in the culinary world. 
Okay, and this is an accredited program. Yes, American uh, Culinary Federation is a prestigious accreditation body. We have that. Our students are able to get that designation once they get the full-time work experience, and we're very proud of the program. All right, well, at the announcement of the Molly McGuire Culinary Arts Endowment Scholarship, we had the opportunity to talk to one of these outstanding faculty members, and we wanted to share that conversation with you. My name is Jim Allen. I am the instructor in pastry and basic cooking techniques here at Pensacola State College. The quality of the culinary arts program here at Pensacola State College is we get to send our students once they graduate and while they are here attending out into the workforce. We have students that work out on Pensacola Beach, over in Orange Beach, Gulf Shores, even downtown Pensacola at some of the newer restaurants that are coming up there. We also get uh, students that get to donate time to charitable organizations, a lot of volunteer work that goes out to places like the Ronald McDonald House. Chef Verlin usually is in charge of that. Uh, we just, we have great uh, ability to outsource our students to uh, venues where they can get jobs and get experience. The program of study here is so popular with students and potential students. I think a lot of that has to do with exposure on television. You get to see a lot of reality television now and competitions on TV that show how fun culinary arts can be, not just the dark side that may have been uh, uh, a little bit hectic and crazy as uh, the food industry can be known for. So we get a lot more people exposed to the positive parts of it. You know, the ability to create, the ability to make menus, the ability to like engage with ingredients and cook. Uh, it, uh, you, those people that are passionate about things actually are attracted to this field. So we get a lot of them coming in. That's why we're on such a large wait. Uh, the program here prepares students for employment after graduation by giving them basic fundamental uh, methods of production. These are how to use a knife, uh, the basics of sauteing, grilling, baking. Uh, these things, although we can't ensure a student remembers every single thing that we get to show them, uh, it does give them a skill set, a toolbox per se, that they can take out into the workforce and at least be familiar with those items and keep them at a trainable level so they can uh, move forward with their careers. Uh, an endowment like this enhances this program because it allows people that may not be able to afford to come to school an opportunity to come and uh, kind of pursue something that, that they're really interested in. Uh, it's uh, any type of endorsement like this, it just is hugely beneficial to us. It helps us get the things that we need so we can stay modernized and help show students things that are going on now, trends now that happen in the culinary industry. And uh, without these types of, uh, of benefits and, and endorsements, you know, we, we tend to fall further and further behind. This is an ever-changing field, so the more we stay in tune with modern techniques, the better we can prepare our students. So it's, it's a wonderful thing. And so thank all of the family members that are here today and that contributed toward this scholarship. Thank all of the friends of Mom McGuire and McGuire that contributed to the scholarships. It, it raises the level of our culinary program and not only in its recognition but also in the statue of, uh, stature of having a uh, $200,000 endowed scholarship, uh, which I believe is the largest endowed scholarship that this college uh, will have. And as I look out among all of you, I see how you have taken a part of your life at some point in the past and made a major contribution of your time and your talent and your finances in uh, dedicating uh, those three things to this college to make sure that it continues to help the kinds of students that walk through our doors that want a better life for themselves and their families. So from my heart to you, I appreciate it so very much and thank you. Uh, the fact that we have a gift of $200,000 that's coming into the foundation helps us to continue to fund those scholarships that we so desperately need to as it relates to the growth of this community. We're extremely grateful to you because you made it happen. Over 200 people involved, was involved in this and, and we're just grateful. Uh, uh, and I think Molly McGuire would be very grateful to she was that kind of person. 
all of you who contributed, I want you to know that the students that come through our college are working in a place that, not where the rubber meets the road, but where the food meets the table. And these kids, our students, are going to have a part of Mom McGuire's soul in their education. Molly was a leader for her employees who she treated like family and whom eventually became her family. They all shared her passion for only the best for our customers. She loved working side by side with them and making a difference. And making a difference, <coughs> Molly did. So obviously a great program. And Erin, I wanted to talk to you about that. We already have awesome programs at Pensacola State College. These endowments enhance those programs, right? They do, they do. We work with, uh, we have about 180 endowments at Pensacola State College. So that really shows you the community connection that we have with our programs. Uh, we have many premier programs, culinary being just one of those. Mm -hmm. And, and our, our endowments provide dollars that enhance those programs, again, through scholarships or program support. So what is, what is really good programs, what are really good programs, are enhanced through community support through our endowment programs. Okay, and I I'm pulling on, out on the word community there because, Absolutely. Dan, the community can benefit with all of this good cooking that's going on in the kitchen and what these students are learning, right? Absolutely. Uh, we do offer meals to the public, both lunch and dinners, at a minimal cost. Um, the lunches are typically $10 and the dinners are about $20. Um, and most people leave that experience with just a wow factor um, under their belt. They really are impressed with the food, they're impressed with the service, and they can very quickly see why there is a, um, a, often a waiting list to get in uh, to the program and why those individuals who complete the program are so in demand by local businesses up and down the Gulf Coast. Okay, we'll get back to that waiting list, but first, for those who just are hanging on your every word about the lunch and dinners, <laughs> how do I get one? First of all, go to the website, PensacolaState.edu, um, and it's a lottery. It's so popular that we actually require people to send us a quick email to culinarytickets at PensacolaState.edu, and then we will notify you which particular uh, event you're able to attend. And again, uh, once that opens every semester at the beginning of the semester, uh, it fills up very, very quickly. So if you're interested in coming to see what the culinary students are doing and tasting some of that spectacular food, um, at the beginning of each semester, check our website and uh, you'll see the instructions on how to do that. Okay, and then also the website, the place to start if you're a student or a potential, you, you want to get in this program as a student. If you're interested in the student, we have a couple contact informations. Uh, Chef Langham um, is our uh, program coordinator. He is absolutely spectacular. He knows the students, he knows the programs, he helps people, um, directing them to financial aid, some of the scholarships, for example. Uh, for those individuals who are worried about paying for it, um, we have a lot of resources to, to help those individuals who have uh, the need. Um, his phone number is 484-1422, 484-1422, Chef uh, David Langham. Okay, and before we leave, Erin, if we can just recap again, this endowment is the Molly McGuire Culinary Arts Endowment Scholarship, and it's another example of how the community can get involved. It is. It's a fantastic example. It, it is a community uh, uh, participation sort of endowment. Again, 200 people that came together to uh, remember somebody who had a legacy in, in culinary in industry. And uh, it's a way to get involved. You can go to our website, foundation.pensacolastate.edu, and learn more about creating an endowment. Or you can uh, uh, call me at 484-1560, and we can talk to you about that. Um, and, they, and they support the college, they support WSRE, they support across the, the entire organization. All right, thank you. thank you. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being with us Our today. Our pleasure. All right, and when we return, education doesn't take a summer break at Pensacola State. We'll find out why these young students are excited to spend part of their summer in the classrooms on the PSC campus. Right now, a look at what's ahead at Pensacola State. Welcome back. When the last school bell rings for most young students, it's time to hit the beach or the bayou or just the backyard. But for hundreds of kids ages 6 through 12, summertime means it's time to go back to school at Pensacola State's Kids College. 
And joining us in the studio to talk about Kids College is Frances Yeo, who is the Coordinator of Recreation and Leisure Services of PSE's Continuing Education Department. And welcome back to our program, Frances. Thank you so much. Always a delight to be here with you, Drexel. Well, great. Now, 25 years Kids College has been taking place on the Pensacola State College campus. How awesome is that? And it just grows every year, doesn't it? It is. It's a wonderful service. And what's exciting is that a lot of them come back and take academic classes because we've taken away a lot of the intimidation factor of being on a college campus. All right, let's start at the beginning for those who may not be familiar with Kids College. Tell us what it is and who can be involved in it. Yes, it is for six to 12 year olds and just like college, they can choose from a variety of different classes that are age appropriate in the classrooms where the college kids are. Not at the same time, they're in the classrooms. Right. They're on the same college campus. They go to the student center for lunch and also just like college, they can just take one class or they can spend the whole day with us. So that takes it really to the next level of what some parents might think of as summer camp because you don't have to enroll them for the whole summer or an entire week or it's not, it's not as strict with the enrollment. So I think a lot of parents find that appealing with the flexibility of that. Well, a lot of them do because you might be thinking about, well, grandma was gonna keep them all summer, um, try to save a little money. Well, grandma also needs to do some errands. So maybe she just wants to bring them over for a couple hours so they come to take a swimming class and we had a group that came in and they just took a s cool science class. So they can just come for the hour and 45 minutes mm -hmm. and it's five days a week, Monday through Friday. And it, it's a course that they take. Now they don't have to worry about what grade they make in the class because it's all hands-on learning. It is a way for them to experience the different things. For instance, sports sampler. Okay. They're going to learn a lot of different sports so it's not just a basketball camp or a volleyball camp, but they'll do a little bit of a lot of different sports. Okay, and I know they also do, their, they can study science, as you said, the cool science thing, maybe have the swimming, and also arts and crafts. Yes, it's really exciting because we have it in all three age groups. We divide up the kids six to eight, eight to 10, and 10 to 12 year olds. And so we have different classes of arts and crafts going on at the same time with different age groups. So they're able to do different projects in different classes. You also have um, theater, different, you know, if, there are a lot of children at that age have varied interests. So you have a little bit of something for everyone, right? It's so exciting to see the theater class because at the end of the week they put on a performance same with the fashion show class, the modeling class, and new this year we have Polynesian dance class and they're gonna do a performance. So that's exciting to see the kids actually show parents and grandparents and friends and relatives can come see their performances. The length of kids college, just say if you were to want to go every week for the entire time, 10 weeks, is that? It's 10 weeks, we're here from the, it was started in June and it'll go through the middle of August and they are in one and two week sessions. So new this year, I've added a lot more one week sessions because it's challenging sometimes for parents that are trying to involve their children in a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. They're also trying to visit grandma as well as vacation Bible school or a lot of different things. So they, they can't commit the two or three weeks. So they come just for one week and it's $29 for the hour and 45 minutes for five days. I was about to say, this is very affordable, which yes. is also important to parents. Yes, it is. It's so exciting to see the kids actually experience learning something. The teachers are excellent. I have over 35 teachers that are out there interacting with the children and all of them have a passion and a skill for whatever subject they're teaching. You have repeat students you've told me that come to this camp year after year after year, right? Yeah, it's so exciting to see the kids grow up. And after they've been through kids college, there's a chance for them to come back and further their leadership development through Chain Reaction, which is a teen volunteer organization in Pensacola. So 14 to 18 year olds are able to be teacher assistants. And they know what Kids College is because they've been through it. And it's exi exciting for us to see how much they've grown up. And now they are showing a lot of maturity in being able to help the teachers manage the classes. 
The Kids College is important, it's popular, there's a high participation in it, but it is only one part of the continuing education here at Pensacola State College. So I want to talk just a little bit about that while I have you in the studio. Sure, sure. It is a very important part of it, um, but it's just in the summer, and we have continuing education all year round. And we have a wonderful gymnastics program where we start with just the, the little one-year-olds and they go up through adult. And we have several levels. We have a competitive gymnastics team that um, competes around the, the whole southeast area. And then we have a lot of classes that a lot of adults would enjoy. Basic computers, they might be scared to get on a computer. Mm -hmm. Ours is, yes, you push this button, it's a click. And so they learn a lot of basic computers. We have a lot of foreign languages, six or seven different languages. And we also do private lessons in a lot of our classes as well. A lot of art classes for adults all throughout the year. So if someone is interested, let's go to Kids College first, and, and there's still time for their, their child to participate in this awesome opportunity. How do they go about doing that? Um, you can register at pensacolastate.edu and then a backslash CE. That brings you right to the continuing education page. Has the schedule on there as well as it has a way to register directly there. There's an emergency contact form that we need so that we can check your kids in and out. Building 96 on the main Pensacola campus is where you would always come to bring your children to drop them off. You're welcome to come by and talk to us and ask us questions. In the schedule, we have descriptions of all the, the 60 different courses nice. that are available. Okay, and you know, you said the emergency contact too, and that makes me harken back to something you said earlier about the safety part of it. Again, a concern of parents, and these students are very well watched over when they are on this campus. They are supervised the whole time. We have Escambia County school buses that take them around campus from class to class. The teachers are in the classrooms and we take them to the classes. We always have the teen volunteers available as well as several of my staff have been there for years and years and it's very exciting to see the consistency of the leadership at Kids College. Tell me about some of the remarks you hear from parents at the end of the, the week or the two weeks or the whole summer, however long their, their child is here. One, one parent told me something that was really interesting. Um, they're from a split home, so they have to trade the kids off every other week. And she said, it's so wonderful because the kids can't wait to get up to come to Kids College. And you know as a parent, sometimes there's a little guilt pang when you head to work and you don't know exactly how your kids are gonna interact. And to be comfortable in the setting, they make new friends. A lot of what Kids College is about is to create an opportunity for independence because here they are in college, and it's so much fun to ask a kindergartner, are you ready for college? And they're like, uh, I think so. <laughs> I haven't gone to first grade though, but Aww. it really is wonderful. Well, wow. well, you are wonderful to be such a part of this program, and I know that it is dear to your heart, yes. and thank you so much for coming on our program today and sharing with us. Well, thank you for the opportunity to help more people know what it is. I mean, 25 years is a, a very well-established program, and I am just thrilled to keep trying to make it better and better. All right. Thank you, Francis Yeo. Thank you. And when we return, a patriotic salute to the Pledge of Allegiance. For many Americans, the month of July is the most patriotic month of the year. July 4th is when the United States of America remembers and celebrates the anniversary of its Declaration of Independence from Great Britain. A timely program on the PSC campus recently was held where Dr. Galen McCullough explained the meaning of the Pledge of Allegiance and explained from his perspective the importance of this single, powerful sentence. Perhaps no single sentence in the English language honors America's heroes more than the Pledge of Allegiance. Before I was 18 years old, I learned that respect for each other's rights is simply good citizenship. As an American, 
I am responsible for doing everything in my power to protect and defend your rights. And in the name of fairness, you are expected to do everything necessary to defend and protect mine. About 100 people attended Dr. McCullough's presentation. Each year, several instructors at Pensacola State are honored for their exceptional work in the classroom with an Academy of Teaching Excellence Award. We've been profiling these instructors for you, and on today's show, we introduce you to Donna Shumway. I've been here uh, 15 years full-time, and then I was working part-time as an adjunct for a year before that. I was working out in the field. Uh, full-time at one of the medical facilities, local medical facilities. So I worked during the day and then I came here and taught once or twice a week in the evenings. Health information technology is the lifeblood of a medical facility. It is the piece that everything goes to. So think of it as your patient information, your medical information. So we have the physicians needing it. We have the nurses needing it. We have radiography needing it. We have physical therapy needing it. We have EMTs needing it. We are the compliance people behind the scenes. We edit and look at it. We determine and make sure that all the parts and the pieces are there so that it now has become a legal document. I don't really think anyone really knows it all, truthfully, even in, in any particular field, because we're learning every day new things. In this field particularly, it can change from week to week. Uh, the technology will change, the uh, way that we uh, do billing, the way that we code medical information. So we teach our students here, especially in our programs, to make sure data quality is job number one. So the information that we enter or that we store within a system now, we want to be able to retrieve easily. We want to be able to retrieve it for statistical purposes, uh, reporting purposes, uh, reimbursement purposes for healthcare, which is a large part of it. So we have to make sure that the students get a very good and thorough background on how to do these particular skills. Had a very good experience with Pensacola State. The rewards are, for me, the teaching side. The rewards are seeing my students when I go out in the field and they are out there working and they are doing good and excelling. And that will do it for this edition of Pensacola State Today. I'm your host, Rexel Gilbert. Thank you so much for being with us. We'll see you next time. <music>